This is the Entrepreneur's Guide to the AI Revolution. Um, and I'm so excited to share a little bit of background information on our esteemed expert today, and she is certainly esteemed, Teresa Fessenstein. Teresa is an executive HR and people leader with over 25 years of experience in operations, company building, employee experience, and engagement. Throughout her career, Teresa has been recognized for her expertise and has been and has received awards for mentorship and diversity from Globe Street Women in Business. She founded PeoplePower.ai to provide training and resources that help HR leaders effect effectively implement AI, grounded in the belief that organizational culture is the foundation for AI adoption. We are so excited to learn from your expertise today, Teresa. We also know how valuable your time is, and we're grateful to you for investing in Dreamers and Doers in this community in this way. And with that, I will hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Nicole. I, I just want to start off by saying how much I have personally um, benefited from being a part of Dreamers and Doers. I feel like seeing Janet's face right below me on the screen. Janet, I got was had an opportunity just as a personal example to spend a one-on-one -on -one orbit time with her a few moons ago. And just the giving nature of her guidance and thoughtfulness in like, taking action to like help me out with something was like mind blowing team Janet for sure. And just through the forum, constantly getting like great insights, advice, resources. And so I'm so thankful that I found a community like dreamers and doers, particularly as a newer entrepreneur who is navigating the waters of business ownership, business development, and doing a lot of things that I clearly or not reasonably would have would have done through my 25 years of experience in HR. So before I jump into slides and decks and all that stuff, I just wanted to do one thing that I do in every session I do, which is to take one minute, not long, one minute to take a breath or two or four, um, if you're into box breathing, if you're not into box breathing and just want to take this minute, but I know how busy our days are. And so taking a minute to just center ourselves on focusing for being here together, clearing our mind of sort of as much as we can of the other things going on and just giving ourselves a minute to embrace this time that we have decided to take to further our own knowledge. Um, I just want to honor a minute of time in doing that. Okay, so as we open our eyes and reconnect, if you had your eyes closed, um, you might have thought to yourself when you read my bio, like, why on earth is Teresa talking about artificial intelligence? And so I thought the best place to start was just to give a little bit of a story around my experience in in coming into this journey. So as I mentioned, I've worked for a variety of organizations from huge enterprise global media companies you may have heard of. Um, News Corp is one of them. Omnicom Media Group is another one. Um, to more boutique, small family-owned businesses in um, industries like commercial real estate, um, uh, employer of record, so talent maintenance. Uh, managed service providers, nonprofit. I worked for Trinity Wall Street for a while, one of the oldest churches in New York City. Um, and so through those experiences, my focus was always on learning, creating, and I was never sort of what I would call maybe your standard HR person. I was always looking to make things more efficient, it drives me crazy when somebody just lives what I what I say is sometimes is like people sometimes like living with the rock in their shoe. I just cannot survive with the rocks in my shoe. And there have always there has always been this focus for me to figure out a better, faster way to do it. And I think those two words are really important: better and faster. Um, 
And the reason why that's always been so important to me is such a critical part of what I've done is worked on building community. It is one of the foundations of People Power AI. It is one of my personal values to support and build community as well as building learning opportunities as well as, as amplifying smart women. Um, and so what happened was I decided to leave the corporate world. I'll give you a very short version of this. Left the corporate world in July of 22 after, to be candid, extreme burnout. Um, it was the last three years prior to that were the hardest of my career. Um, and I really struggled with the weight and pressure that was on me as a head of people making a lot of key decisions um, about health and wellness for employees. I have spent so much time building culture that I decided to formulate a culture company. And that company I started initially was called Culture Markers. Um, and in December of 22, I really started to struggle with like putting my website together and coming up with all of the, like I read the, the articles and the books on like, as a business owner, you have to have this huge business plan and you have to put all this data on your website. And I was like, I don't even know where to start. And I had had heard about, and it, I'm a very early adopter. So I had heard about this like fun little tool that you could use called ChatGPT. And I was so curious. And so I thought this will be great for my LinkedIn. So I went on to ChatGPT. This was version like 3.0 and asked it to come up with something simple, like write a haiku about culture. And it did. It wrote, it was the very first thing I did on ChatGPT. And then I asked it about, you know, give me a list of the top 25 women, um, female quotes uh, from influential women throughout history. And they did that too. And I was sort of blending my insight and experience with Canva and AI. And, and what, what really struck me most personally was going back to that battle of communication I had through COVID and through the racial and, and emotional strife that our country was going through and having conversations at work that I had never had before and really was at a loss for how to start them. And I thought to myself, damn, if I had chat GPT when I was trying to figure out one, how to write a letter to my employees that we had an employee not only pass away, but two other members of their family pass away in an environment where we were a family company. It was a family owned business for over a hundred years. How do I write that? Where do I start? Um, then I started to have to have conversations around the murder of George Floyd, really engage workers in a way and employees in a way that I had never done before um, and felt out of my element with, and we got through it but I could have used some better tools. And then the the probably one of the other hard things I had to talk about was religious beliefs. All of a sudden we were talking about beliefs around vaccinations and people's faith that I had never had to talk about. So these were all instances that I went back to when I first started learning generative AI and realized, oh my gosh, this would have been such a valuable help for me. And so I really started to dig into it. Um, I started using it for my own business. And very soon afterwards, I started talking on Slack channels. I started asking about it on LinkedIn and I started taking courses. And eventually that led me to get very serious about my coursework. And I ended up getting certified through MIT in AI for business strategy. And um, it's kind of take people power AI really started from there. So I wanted to give that level setting because it's important to understand that this has been a journey of a year to get me to this point. Um, and so to me, there's not, there's nothing that we can't accomplish, even if we're completely pivoting in a short period of time, it's just a matter of finding the right resources. So that being said, I'm going to jump into my deck. Uh, a few other just sort of housekeeping things I want to make sure and share. Number one is that if you have questions, ask your questions. Uh, don't worry about interrupting me. Don't worry. This is all about key learning and getting some experience and some exposure. My plan and objective for today is to focus in on understanding where 
kind of the starting point of learning is. I know that through the conversations I've had with different dreamers and doers and in other communities, the baseline for where people are in their AI journey can be really varied. So I want to make sure that we we touch base on some of the basics, but also go into some specifics. And as we get to the end, we'll talk a little bit more about specifics. But if I'm in the middle of a roller coaster of conversation, please don't hesitate. Use the chat. Um, ping Nicole, use the reactions, raise your hand, just come off mute and just interrupt me and ask a question. I'm completely open to that. Um, and so with that, let's jump in. So the first thing I wanted to share is the idea that AI can feel like magic. Um, it is this sort of amazing tool that can allow us to expand and 10x what we're able to do. But the thing that I keep really centered is that humans are the ones that actually create the magic. We 10 times our capabilities and, and what we know through a system of algorithms and mathematical equations that feels magical. And I know for me, if you'd ever, if I'd ever said, if my brother ever knew that I was going to go into something having to do with based in math, after we sat at our dining room table for hours with me crying and him trying to teach me math, he would be shocked. Um, but it is this amazing tool and it's up to us to figure out like how to use it. Um, the internet of things, uh, ping the chat if you've ever heard the term, the internet of things. And just put a one in, keep it simple. Um, the internet of things is basically this this network that we have built over the past many years of interconnectedness with tools and and um software my my husband has gone through this journey to ensure that i never have to walk through my home clicking or touching a a light switch because he's interconnected everything in our house saying, you know, Alexa, turn on the lights has become much more frequent than flipping a light switch. And that's sort of a mini example of the internet of things where concepts and equipment and machines are, are sort of working in our world. So this, and they, many of them are using artificial intelligence already. So there have been tools and, and, and equipment that we've had in our homes for years um, that we that have used insights to give recommendations. And at its base form, that's really what, sorry, I lost everybody. That's really what the internet of things is. So I wanna talk a little bit about some definitions. Artificial intelligence is simply the simulation of human behavior by a computer. And the term large language models, or sorry, machine, machine learning models is something that I'm sure that you've probably heard before. And what that, that is what gen generative AI is built off of these, um, these machine learning models and large language models that basically take billions and billions and trillions and bits of information and you create predictions based on that insight that it has. Um, there is no, I've used the word magic. There's no real magic to it. It's really just probabilities. It's what is the next probable thing that would come after this little bit of information is expanded or is extrapolated based on a history of thousands, thousands and, and thousands and trillions of bits of information. Um, natural language processing is something that's really interesting. And I want to talk about a little bit later relative to its ability to, to assess and truncate pieces of data that we have really not been able to do in an easy, fast way historically. And then we have computer vision, which is the ability to assess and view imagery and create predictions based on those images or text models or text that is built in to create those images. So we have this universe of artificial intelligence that encompasses a lot of things, other things that I haven't mentioned, robotics and um, and deep learning and, and all of these different facets of artificial intelligence are important to know to that extent if you're going to be using AI as an entrepreneur. I want to talk really and focus a little bit more on generative AI and the generative work that 
can be done through models like ChatGPT and Claude and Bard. And I'll get into some, some models in just a second. It is this amazing capability to sound like us, to build imagery that we ask for, to be, in fact, the way I view generative AI is sort of my one of my most trusted advisors in whatever capacity I need to learn something or do something. Now, I will say that even though I might use generative AI for some copywriting, I also employ the valuable insights from a human who is an expert in copywriting. Now, I may not employ them to the same level that I would have previously, but getting somebody's real lived experience is so important in the same way that I would never recommend a company switch to an AI model for their human resources because it doesn't have emotion. It doesn't have feeling. It doesn't have instinct. It has prediction. And that is that is what it has. But it can, through that prediction, really guide us and help us through our journey of whatever business challenge we're facing at the time. So out of curiosity, um, again, just putting in the chat, I want to make sure I can see the chat. Oh, here we go. Um, I would love if you would put in the chat sort of a, a ranking, let's say from one to five. So if one is our, you know, we've one is a, you've never even really explored chat GPT. I had a conversation with a close colleague the other day who I was talking to her about what I do now. And she was like, I've literally never even gone into chat GPT. It's just not within her scope. She's not being inundated with messaging about it. She has now with my Twitch, but she hadn't before. If you are a one, that's great. No problem. If you are a five, which would be you feel like you really have expertise, you're using it, you've generated your own GPTs or, or bots, you have shared those with others, you educate other people. So just give me an idea of where you feel you are as it relates to AI. I'm just going to give folks a second to put their responses in. Okay, got some threes, some twos, some kind of right in the middles, which tells me that. So we're going to, I'm going to do a little second quiz on that in just a second relative to just so that I can get a better, a better understanding. But I want to talk a little bit about what generative AI can do. So it has this capability of taking all of this this data in these large language models and using algorithms, which are basically just, as I said, predictions to create outputs. Now, the manner in which it can create is grows every single day. Right now, a lot of the main building and learning that goes into a generative AI model has to do with human creation. It is humans putting the, the queries in, um, scanning and pulling data from the internet, from which is all human created. But in the near future, we definitely envision that there's a space where generative AI is going to be much more focused in and honed in on self-developed or AI generated knowledge. And so that's going to be a really um, interesting development. And that's why it's going to be ever important that just because we learn today about becoming a prompt engineer, Tomorrow, that skill may not be needed. And so people like me are out there doing the heavy lift to, to drink from the fire hose and try to stay up to date on what new things are happening, new tools and new techniques so that we can make things a lot easier. I think there's a future where people aren't going to want to have to understand all of these things. They're just going to want it to kind of happen. They're going to get used to working with automated partners or automated colleagues as opposed to human colleagues. And there's a lot of... Um, questions on what the impact of that might be. Um, I will say this as well, that there are a lot of conversations happening around the, the risks and the concerns around AI. I am a part of those and I hear those. My position is, is to be positive about it and to lean into the learning and leading to the opportunity. So I'm not, I'm not also a, a, a deck reader. So I wanted to share this screen with you so that you could sort of envision perhaps ways that you haven't thought about using artificial intelligence or generative AI historically, including things like, you know, within your business, using something like game strategy, which is incredibly engaging to bring people into your business or to 
incentivize people to utilize more of your business assets or services. Um, things like building out your, we'll talk a lot about things like building, using it for marketing, but there are so many other facets of AI that can support the business operations you put out into the world. I would love if you would take a second for those that are on and just share a few of the, think through as I go through the next few slides, what are some of the projects, processes, and tasks that take you the most time to fulfill for your clients? What are some of those things that really are like the heavy time suck? I'd be really curious to learn more about that. I wanted to share some tools that you, you may or may not be familiar with. So this is where that second quiz comes in. So take a look at uh, the 15 AI tools that I have listed here. And I would love to see by number, how many of them you have personally used and explored. So take a minute and look through what we have, these various tools, and let me know which ones have been helpful or that you have used in the past. I feel like since Janet introduced me to really using Notion, she's probably used Notion AI. <laughs> she's the goat when it comes to that. Excellent. Ooh, Rainia, I would love to talk to you about Inca. I'm actually an advisor and partner for Inca. Um, great. Oh, wonderful. Rewrite. Definitely add additional tools if you have them that you have used that you've found particularly powerful. These are the ones that I've used um, and explored pretty deeply throughout my last year of being an entrepreneur and building my business. And I think what I've found most often is that the, the list of tools that are available can be really overwhelming. Looking at LinkedIn or articles and all of a sudden you're seeing things like here are a thousand AI tools to help you with XYZ. Um, really one recommendation, a clear recommendation I have is whatever industry you are in, whether it's, you see yourself as an entrepreneur. So you're looking for more entrepreneurial tools, or you're looking for tools that are specific to the industry you serve. There are great resources for figuring out what those tools are. In fact, I would highlight, um, uh, Futurepedia, which is a great tool for, kind of siphoning down and understanding which AI tools are out there, um, that might be really helpful. Um, I have a huge list of tools that was filtered by an AI focus group. They regularly update that list. Megan, yes, please share the link. Um, these are tools that I put through as, as ones that I actually have used. And so sometimes I know that that's super helpful as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the business case for AI as an entrepreneur. Um, Understanding the ways that we can actually infuse AI into the, the way that we work is really broad. It really is only limited to our habits that we put in place around using AI. Um, I think there's some really interesting technology coming out with Dell announcing they were going to create a, you know, straight, basically a straight to Bing button on their keyboards. It really, I mean, think about the money that's being invested. We heard about it all last year in the trillions into generative AI and other AI tools. It is it is only limited by how much we think about, oh, could AI do that? And most frequently there's, it's not going to necessarily be the, the perfect answer, but it will be something that will help you get that page started or get that promotion started or get that sales pitch started or get that brand building deck started. Um, so there's a lot of different ways, um, market analysis, uh, personalized marketing, uh, client dynamic assessments, um, insights. If you are the type of business who provides uh, summary insights to your clients, there are some really amazing tools that can help you do that much faster with a time savings. And then I think the question becomes, how are we using that time that we save? 
Let's talk a little bit about prompt engineering. I'm sure everybody has heard this term. I always like to joke that, you know, if you weren't before, you now can become a prompt engineer by just simply thinking through with some strategy around what you want to get out of that experience that you're having with your AI. Um, I love Mr. Rogers. I love just like flashing his sweet face up just because he's amazing. Um, and I joke that one of the greatest gifts anybody can give is the gift of a well-crafted prompt. AI will do exactly what you ask it to do. If you ask it for something simple, it will give you something simple. If you ask it for clear outcomes, it will do that for you. Uh, just a matter of putting those words together. So I created this. There are many formats. I happen to use this one to start off a, if I'm working on something um, significant, if I'm just looking for how to get an oil stain out of my sweatshirt, which I just asked GPT for yesterday, um, I just ask it, how do I get an oil stain out of a sweatshirt? But if I'm building, let's say I'm building a one sheeter that I need to use to position my business through a pivot, or I have a new client opportunity and they've asked me for a revised bio sheet with clear parameters that don't align with what I currently have, I may go into a different type of approach with my generative AI to really dig into what they what I need out of it. So it is a five step approach or six step approach. It is literally a what it starts with a welcome and it ends with an appreciation. Now some people have a real feeling about humanizing, if you will, um computers. I don't have that feeling. I love to look at walking into a conversation with any mentor that I have as the same way I would approach chat GPT or Claude or perplexity, whichever of those tools that I happen to use. Um, and so as I would begin those conversations, I begin them with greetings and appreciation. Now that has literally no impact on the system or the computer, but what it does have an impact on and studies have shown this is the way that we internalize and communicate with others, whether a machine, a person, has a greater impact on how we infuse and receive information. And therefore that can now turn into much greater and more in-depth conversation. So again, the more you give to the machine, the more you will get out of it. Great data in, great data out. If I'm approaching it with a context that I'm gonna get a really valuable experience, um, I have found that I tend to get more back. And I'll show you an example of that in just a second. So welcome roles requests. So who is your chat GPT today? I'm sure you've all heard. You can ask it to be an expert. You can ask it to have a certain tone of voice. I have a tendency to focus in on people that I admire. So people like Brene Brown or Adam Grant or Priya Parker, those people that depending on the action that I'm taking, I want to infuse some of their um, their approach and their their winning strategies into the way that I'm working. It will not take direct quotes. It's not going to push back specific blocks of text that Brene Brown wrote, but it's taking that idea of using that tone of voice instead of me having to do a ton of work back and forth to clarify. Um, then we have confirmation and appreciation. So welcome, roles, tone, request, confirmation, and appreciation. So here's this in the real world. So on the left-hand side, you might write a simple prompt. And a lot of people, when they first start out, or especially if you are more in the lower numbers of using generative AI, you may view it in the same way that you would have viewed Google or you know, Chrome or any other internet service provider going in and just doing a search. But the important thing to remember is that if you do put a little bit more into the request, so things like providing the role of a social media and SEO optimization specialist. Um, what specific you wanna get out of that? So a specific list of strategies for promoting a virtual event. I have part of my business model is to support online events and to bring people into my network so that I can create opportunities to understand their business and see if there's a good fit for my business. And so I wanna generate as much engagement and as much attendance to those types of things as possible. If that's something you are looking to do as well, might be a really interesting way to do that. Um, we're particularly interested in reaching X person. Who are those people that you really want to meet? The budget is limited. 
that's important. If you are not looking to spend, it can give you a lot of ideas that cost a lot of money. But if you don't have a heavy budget, make sure you outline that. Uh, keep your enthusiastic tone, but I don't want you to sound like a crazy hyper person. Like I do find that sometimes with ChatGPT and not so much Claude and not so much perplexity, but with ChatGPT, sometimes the language is really obvious that it's generative AI generated, you know, using terms like superpowers and um, skyrocketing. Those are just not words that we use in day-to-day -day language. And so making sure that you advise it to be natural sounding or, you know, my tone tends to be down to earth and friendly. Um, please don't be over the top. Those are other tools that ways you could sort of support that. Um, and then questions that might help me or questions that might help the generative AI help me answer that more thoroughly. Um, and then thank you so much. So there's that each of those phases, and I know a lot of people are very familiar now with the idea of asking ChatGPT to ask you questions. If you haven't ever done that, I highly recommend it. Another sort of unique tip that I use a lot now is if I'm not finding that it's giving me what I'm asking for and I'm having to refine my prompt, number one, I generally realized that I wasn't as specific as I could have been in my ask or there was something that I was really searching for, but I need to refine to get it there. But if that's not it, sometimes I'll give it a little bonus. Like if you can get this right, I'll give you a million dollars. And somehow putting those little tricks in gets it to respond in a different way. All of a sudden I'll get something really more spot on. So it doesn't happen all the time, but that's just a fun little way to incorporate that into our experience with generative AI. Um, just I'll do a quick, we have 20 minutes left. So I wanna do a quick, if anybody has any questions, I'm not seeing in the chat, Nicole, I just wanna create a space for those to come up. Nothing yet, okay. I wanted to actually before I go to this, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. I wanted to share my um my screen. So I'm gonna stop sharing my deck, but I want to share my chat GPT. So give me just a second as I share this out. So I wanted to show you what the reality looks like by putting in place something like this. So give me. Sharing. So here's an example uh, that I actually used with ChatGPT. This same question, hello chat, you are an expert in social media and SEO optimization. I'm hoping you can help me with the challenge. And I put that exact same prompt in. Now, based on my own chat GPT. So I can show you what regular chat GPT 3.5 gave me, what the general question provided. So here's the initial question, best way to promote an online event. Sorry, this Teresa, be... I'm not sure if it's just me, but I'm seeing your Google search screen. Yep. I was yep. just gonna say the oh. same thing. We're stuck on your browser tab on Google. Oh, that's not what I want you to see. Let me try again. Thanks, Janet. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Janet. What are we seeing now? So we're seeing ChatGPT. We're seeing the best way to promote your online event. We're seeing by rotating the responsibility of leading the meeting, you not only diversify the content, empower your teams. Okay. Well, we're going to go back to the deck. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why that's happening. I only have one chat open, so I shouldn't have. Let me just try something else. Hmm. Not true. I had two open. Second, I just wanted everybody to have a chance to see this, if it's helpful. Here's what I'll ask: Is this is seeing this helpful? Put a one in the chat. If it's not helpful, we'll 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 move on.
Okay, I'm going to move on since that I said put a one in the chat if it was helpful. Okay, so we're going to go back to my deck. Okay, so what I wanted to share essentially with the idea of that prompt technique is that Generative AI can build a lot for you. It can build through sales documentation. It can analyze insights from across large and diverse um, spreadsheets and analytics. It can take white papers or articles and through multi-upload, give you the key takeaways that you might want to use for content creation or for supporting your clients' needs. Um, and that's really why I wanted to show a little bit of that, that if you if you really think dynamically and explore what you need on a daily basis from you know something that you would maybe typically spend an hour or two hours working to cultivate, how can you cut that time down by using generative AI? But it is important that we are cautious in our process um, because this is a constant learning. There's a lot happening. And as I said, there's a lot coming out every day. We, we all see it. Um, and AI can really make you think that it's a human in the way that it's communicating. It can sound very real. And that's where things like hallucinations and Boop, boop. There we go. <laughs> Hallucinations and other issues can come into place. So I wanted to talk a little bit about ensuring a few major points of risk with AI. Number one is that you want to, particularly as a business owner, make sure that you're protecting your intellectual property. So anything you put in, any documents you upload, you just want to redact them of certainly client-specific names insights, anything that you is a work in progress for you that's not public, um, unless you can you can set your chat to being private and not sharing it um, if you really want to kind of explore, but it's going to limit the output that you have by doing so. So just think about that. Another really good um, method for sort of exploring the value of ChatGPT without kind of having a global share is to create a custom GPT. Has anybody just a, by a show of hands in the chat, um, put a one if you have created your own custom jet chat, custom GPT yet, or have you explored the, the marketplace for custom GPTs? A one if you have, a two if you haven't. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if anybody would like a quick tutorial on how to do that, um, first of all, the, the important thing is the $20 a month you would spend for a pro version, if you haven't already done that, especially as a business owner, I have personally found is well worth the investment. I invest in a few different AI tools. Jasper is one of them. Um, Claude is another and ChatGPT Pro are three that I invest money in. And it is well worth it, if only for the custom GPT option, because you can really, you can keep them private, you can upload your own insights and history, and you can then build off of research projects, things that you've done in the past so that you just don't have to recreate the wheel in a safe place that's not shared. And they do commit at the bottom of your custom GPT, if you've left it private, that it isn't being integrated into the greater learning system or LLM of ChatGPT. There are other tools that you can create custom custom GPTs on, including Poe AI. The first uh, bots that I created, I called them bots then, the first that I created were on Poe and got really positive feedback from there. Um, you can't do as deep of a learning or education in Poe as you can in ChatGPT, but again, there's pluses and minuses on both sides. Um, now that the marketplace is open as well, there hasn't been any insight or I haven't heard anything about being paid for them. And that's not really why I put it together. I created one called HR Advisor 
because one of the things that I found my clients struggling with was for very simple questions, this waiting game that they had on getting an answer or getting started on, on moving forward. And so I created this custom GPT to help leaders or HR professionals get quick answers or get started on a quick answer or get ideas. Um, one example I posted on LinkedIn today was a woman was looking for ideas for changing her routine town hall meetings and getting some themes. That's not something that you should really need to wait for somebody else to answer or to give you guidance on. You're going to find a plethora of ideas and solutions through a quick query or a quick prompt with ChatGPT or one of the other generative AI tools. Um, so we talked about IP security um, and confidentiality. Uh, there's also bias built within these generative AI systems. One of the missions that I'm on is to support and encourage more women getting involved in understanding how generative AI works, how these AI systems are built and used so that there's more opportunity for female and underrepresented voices in the world of crafting and building this amazing, these amazing tools that are going to impact the way we work and the way our clients work. And so making sure that we're on this learning journey together is so important. Um, a few best practices as we close in on the last 12 minutes. Number one, opt for trusted platforms. Ask your friends or ask colleagues what they're using. Understand within our own dreamers and doers community, what are some of the best tools that you've used to support the marketing development that efforts that you have or to analyze data in a unique way or to forecast potential sales outputs? What are some of those forecasting tools that you that that you've used or AI tools. Iterate and refine. You are going to find new ways to utilize generative AI the more that you use it. And so figuring out the best way that works for you is going to be huge. And being agile, the way we've all learned to be a lot more agile over the past few years. Um, include human review. A statistic I read probably two months ago was that 40%, that's four zero, 40 percent of people that use generative AI don't do any modification to what they uh, what they gain as output. So that means that a lot of times if you're seeing things that look like AI and sound like AI, they are probably AI with literally, yeah, exactly, Zena, no, not good. Um, don't let AI be the front-facing communicator for you or your business. Let it be a tool to help guide you in your journey, give you a starting point, and then build your own expertise and, and build that out through what you know and what makes you magical and special. Um, develop strategies and guidelines. I have some tools available or that will be available on my website by Friday. I have a new website, uh, peoplepower.ai, that is going to provide you with some guidance on how to build a strategy for your own business. What is my go-to approach with AI? Not meaning me, but you as a business owner, what is my business's approach? How do I support my team members? If I have team members in utilizing AI, what are our um, source guides and sort of um, home base for what we, what tools we use, what tools we're not gonna use? What is our exploratory process going to look like to integrate new tools? And how am I going to commit either to myself as a solopreneur or to my employees to continue education on these tools as they will be changing the face of, of work? Think about your clients, maybe even prompting, especially for consultants. If you are in a consulting capacity with clients, what are they doing? What is their go-to strategy? Perhaps that's a place that you could provide added value. And finally, just to wrap it up in our last 10 minutes, we'll give some time for questions. I shared here, and this will be in the deck as well as in, um, in the video, just some articles that are particularly relevant for entrepreneurs that are using AI. Some podcasts, I'm a big podcast listener, big fan uh, of several Dreamers and Doers podcasts. Um, Julie Fisher's podcast at the beginning of the year, major impact on my life daily bold moves, um, podcasts that are great for people interested in learning and getting updated on AI that don't go too deep. Like we don't need to necessarily always need to know how the sausage is made. And then how do we create a mindset for AI from putting a 30 minute 
so one thing for me, I want to get a, become a better writer. I would love to, I'm working on what I call my tiny book of AI, where I want to be a better writer. So I dedicate an hour from eight to nine every morning, just to working on my writing. Um, if you want to become a better, more skilled AI user, dedicate some time to it. And my very good friend, Gary Ware, gave me this message for implementing anything in my life. More often than not, perfection isn't the goal more often than not. So as we start to look at AI as a tool we use, can use more often than Google, we might start to see a little bit of a, 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 a really significant change actually in the time we're spending getting to the results we want. Um, share findings with one other person. That's my biggest lesson as a as a lifelong L and D person, share what you learned with at least one person, whether it be a friend, a partner, a pet, even though they can't respond, at least you're saying it out loud, which is a big part of the learning and maintain a list of the tools that you like. That's where my list of, of AI tools come from. There've been a lot more explorations through the year, but they didn't make the list because they're not ones that serve me. Um, there are a lot of other generative AI tools, Bard and Bing, and, and I use those for a while, but I don't find them to be as useful as Claude and Perplexity um, and Chat. Uh, just a little bit more about working with People Power AI. I work with companies in three different ways. Number one is education. So I go into much deeper, more um, demonstration focused learning through education sessions. Those typically last two to four hours. Um, I do internal engagements where I actually do readiness assessments for AI. That's where we look at the tech stack that you or your team is currently using, assess what AI is already built into that, what ancillary tools might be helpful, and then you get a diagnostic report at the end of that month. And then I also serve as sort of a AI expert in residence where I help people actually do the implementations, the training and the support to, to help artificial intelligence really be a factor in the future of business. So those are three ways that I work with, with clients. If you have any clients that might be uh, interested or having conversations about AI, I would love that connection. And then I would love to connect with you. Um, so if you take a screen grab of that little QR code, there's a quick survey. I would love your feedback. I do these sessions um, quite frequently and I'm looking to do more of them. I really would love to know if the information today resonated with you, if it was, um, if there were any things beyond what you were aware of or beyond your scope, or if you thought it was, you know, could have been more deep, deeper into what topics, please, 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 um, as a fellow dreamer and doer, I would really, really love the feedback and appreciate it. I'm on LinkedIn frequently at Teresa Fessenstein, and I have a free group called People Power AI, which is a community of about almost 700 people that are all engaged in the idea that AI can be more human and we need to bring the humanity back to technology. And so as a part of my business commitment to community, that's something that I'm really uh, trying to grow and cultivate. I do free sessions every three weeks called AI Quick Clinics for a half hour, where I focus in on one specific learning lesson with, with people that come and join me. Um, as guests and would love to have you join. So thank you guys. I would love to a answer any questions or hear from you, thoughts, feedback. I think we had one question in the chat um, that I will find and then read out. Okay, um, yeah, Teresa says, chat GPT team says, we never train on your business data for conversations. Is this just with team or is this true with the other version? Yeah, the the paid version of custom GPTs also say this. So if you have the paid version and you do a custom GPT and you make it private, it it will have that. I had that message, but if you make that GPT public or available to a link, that's different. So you have three options with a custom GPT. You can make it fully private. You can make it shareable with specific links, or you can make it fully public. If it's fully public, it also goes into the um, ChatGPT marketplace. Okay, good to know. You know, the team, they also have the GPT store. Yep. And there was some buzz that they might turn it into actual marketplace. Would then your info also be public or rather trainable into the general GPT, you think? Well, for teams, I 
you can make those chat, you can make those GPTs public or private in the same way. I think if it, if you allow for it to go into a marketplace, which you can preserve and protect by not making it public. Um, and with the team setting, you have these, you can have up to 149 people engaged in your team, right? And everybody in that team has the ability to share the information, which is really phenomenal for small businesses. If you're under 149 or you just have four people that you want to share information with, getting the, you know, paying the extra five or $10 for the subscription for your team can be a real financial value in terms of the, the capability with ChatGPT. Um, but I would imagine anything that you allow as public would be visible. But I really, that's a good question. I'm going to follow up on it, Teresa. I love the spelling of your name, by the way, um, <laughs> as a fellow mm -hmm. Teresa. I'm going to follow up on that because I don't, I think the whole piece of Teams is that it's not, it's not being trained. It's not using that data for training. But let yeah, me follow up on it. I'll post it in, I'll post it in Dreamers and Doers as a follow-up yeah, question. Awesome. Yeah, and that your business data is not going to enhance chat. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, and I'll definitely I want to join your LinkedIn group and. Oh, that'd be awesome! Yeah. So great to meet Teresa, you. I had a quick question for you. Um, so you mentioned because I use Claude all the time. Yeah, uh, but I don't. I don't have a paid version. Is there one? And what's the difference between the two? I'm gonna go to my Claude right now. Yeah, I was like, I'm like, am I not paying for that? Because I, I love Claude. It's been fantastic. Um, as part of just in general contributing to helping women, I've built in the last month, like three different websites for different women who are starting out with a business who don't have any resources and I don't charge them anything. But what I'll do is if I I'm looking at what their intention is. I'll have Claude write all the website content. And then I just tell them, okay, here's what, you know, here's where we're kind of at from AI. And then when you want to replace it with whatever you want, just let me know what the text is that you want to replace this with. And it kind of gives them a good place to start from. And if I want to take all of their documents and kind of upload the information and say, okay, hey, here is where we are. Um, this is the context. This is what the person does for their business. I'd like you to write a social post inviting people to contribute to a Kickstarter campaign. It outlined a Kickstarter campaign in a minute. I mean, it literally just was like, here's your Kickstarter campaign. Um, so the, in terms of context, I found that it was really useful. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm like, wait, is there a paid version of that? Cause I was just going to pay for GPT-4. I haven't really used chat GPT as much because I don't really, I'm into privacy. So I didn't have a reason to be using GPT-4 until recently because I have done this sort of deep dive, joined a group that's really going deep into um, AI training for business owners, just mm -hmm. because I think it's important to stay up on it. And if there's a group that's filtering all this stuff and they have hundreds of links and various things, it's just sometimes it's worth paying for the shortcut. So totally. I don't know what I can share from that, but I can I can put a, What's a, the group? a group link. Um, it is called, um, I just joined it the other day. It's like Alessia something and her husband oh, yeah. and they put together some group. Yeah. And they do live trainings. So I don't know if I'd recommend that everybody pays for that. Um, sometimes I just like having access to the group so I could, I could take the, all their links and put them into an Excel sheet and then share them with this group. If you guys want to take a look at that. Um, but I do know that they're dynamic and they update it all the time. So it's kind of, kind of an interesting version of a rolling um, class. Have you, have you seen what they present before? I haven't seen their Teresa? sessions, but I, I know the name okay. Alessia is very, is like, is pinging me as somebody who, who I'm connected with on LinkedIn and, and probably follow pretty closely. Um, mm -hmm. Two, on Claude, there is a paid version. Okay. So the, yeah, the difference is. Yeah, the difference is you similar to similar to ChatGPT four, except for that I think Chat has been much more probably more invested in, and so they're able to push a lot more like the custom GPTs out. With Claude, it's mm -hmm. faster access in times of heavy heavy usage, um, access to beta versions, being able to switch between mm -hmm. versions. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually I don't know that I would say. I really like Claude too. I like Claude for the narrative 
capabilities. Yeah. Like yeah. just really good. I love that I can I love that I can say with enthusiasm and then the writing changes to something more enthusiastic. And yeah, I've been working on learning publishing also because I'm very passionate about volunteering and working with kids. But in order to learn publishing, I've sort of gone the more um, romance novel route, which has been really fun. So Claude is very funny and terrible at comedy. Um, but sometimes <laughs> you'll get this outline and I'm like, oh, that's not funny. I was like, how about we make the boyfriend, um, you know, he has a memory problem and he forgot <laughs> something. <laughs> so I, mean, just, I see some of the stuff that comes back and it's hilarious. It's just, oh so my funny. gosh, having grown up sneaking my mom's romance novels, her like whatever Harlequin Scarlets <laughs> or whatever for many years. Uh, that is so funny. I always had a dream of creating a romance novel and my, my her yeah. hero's name was going to be Brick. I don't know why. <laughs> okay that's great well I'm I'm like well what do we because I in the program that I've been working on there's a whole bunch of women in the program and it's really interesting because they're like okay you're gonna put together a box set I'm like well could I have the thing that is in common that they're all met their person traveling for some reason so at least there's some kind of common thread because if it's just this terrible you know uh, version of, oh, I met this billionaire who swept me off my feet. And I'm this helpless woman. I was like, I told Claude, make her high powered. I'm like, this is not happening. And then all of a sudden she was the lawyer and this was the client. You're like, okay, yes. it's taboo. I got it. Like, yeah, sometimes, and then, sometimes and the other guy was a high powered, he was a high powered VC. And I was like, well, this is getting more interesting. Her designer handbag fell to the ground instead of her knocking over coffee. I was like, all right, you know what? He's just not very good with funny things. <laughs> so anyway it, but it's been really fun it's been really fun to kind of play I like the outlining aspect and then just sort of the the personality of it it's very interesting um I'm mm. gonna pop a link I just made a little telegram group so if anyone here wants to just chat or share some links um then you guys can join that it's literally just for this group so if if you wanted to be in touch I just put it there that way when we go off of here if if anyone had a question or you wanted to reach me, I can try to put together that list for you guys to see also of what they're recommending in terms of links for, because they apparently that group has screened every link that's in there and they test and use the AI software that's listed in the program. So that was why I was like, well, I'll pay to see that. So we'll see how that goes. But sure. um, a lot of them I'm awesome. familiar with. And Midjourney, Midjourney is interesting. So they're the free version that you mentioned, um, how is what's the difference is there because I'm I'm looking at making children's books long term is what I was interested in as a as a side project my my normal business is in technology and finance and it's like putting t I'm putting together a fund um, in Dubai at the moment and I have another project that's a concert series but a lot of it ends up being communications that I have to work on and presentations so all this AI has been fantastic so to just great, generate right? pictures and generate the content and then even if the entrepreneur I'm working with doesn't love it, at least there's something there and they don't have to come up with something from absolutely nothing. It's a good baseline, but it, I find that it doesn't really have as much personality as mm -hmm. like you said, adding your own special sauce is really important. So, yeah, I, I actually, I'm not going to lie. I have used mid journey when I just can't get what I need, like out of Dolly. Um, but mm -hmm. I prefer Dolly. I think mid journey is a bit of like for me personally in the way that I process through using a tool is just a little bit cumbersome. I don't think the UX mm -hmm. is as good, but mm -mm. um I don't have the paid version, but I think that's another good question. I'll I'll if I join this yeah I, I love almost this, pay, um, I almost paid for it the other day. You yeah, just send you I, the login. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious. Um mm -hmm. Interesting. There's also some people, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll hire someone on Fiverr to work on an idea and just sort of kind of flush something out. So I'm designing, I'm designing a Murphy bed right now, which sounds like something totally You different. are like a, a Janet of all trades. It's really, <laughs> it's really fun. Going. So, well, I'm, what I wanted was something that you can take apart and you don't need tools. And as a woman, I can lift it myself and pack it mm. and store it so that it comes apart in components. And we're getting pretty close. The designs are really nice. My neighbor is a fabricator. So I took him what I was looking at and he's going to come back with what he thinks we can do. Um, but the goal was that like a lot of times in New York, you need extra space. 
And to have that, to be able to move the Murphy bed, people give them away because it's too expensive. It takes two guys in a van to move it. And I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be great if you could just break the thing down and store it under your new bed if you don't need it anymore or, you know, put it away and pull it back out. And I said, there, ha- there's no reason why it couldn't be an XL or a queen. And if it's an XL, it would have shelves. And if it was a queen, it wouldn't. So just started working through these ideas, but using AI tools to make an outline or to write some of the presentation or to organize thoughts if you're repetitive has been really helpful. And then hiring the designers on Fiverr, like I did a draft. I have two people designing right now logos for the ladies that I'm helping. I'm not being paid to help them. I'm just helping them because it was kind of the right thing to do. One works with special needs kids and the other one is um, wanting to do environmental um, projects to help the earth and to help raise awareness for being kind to the planet. So I was like, all right, you know what, uh, we'll just do this, but you can hire somebody on Fiverr for like 10, 15, $20 to just do a little logo draft. And then when you're, when you're looking at it, you're saying what you don't like, it actually helps you kind of take that path of what you might like more. Yeah. And so then when you're looking at mid journey, you can take the graphics and drop it in and say, Oh, I don't really like, you know, this in the circle. I'd like it to be more about movement or mindfulness versus like, I don't know what this thing is. And and I find that it will come back with some interesting options sometimes. So in yeah, terms of brainstorming, I, it saves a lot of time. I think with like the logo design kind of thing, I, I'm just, I'm probably more of like a basic B in that, like, canva pro serves my like with a lot of that design stuff i um i could go on a whole thing about murphy beds i I lived in nyc (laughs) okay i lived in the city i love canva and i I left it there yeah i see and it was expensive can you imagine it was 3500 with you yeah it's it's crazy so there's mechanics around it that i that i'm curious to see how how like the mechanics yeah. of making sure that it's that it's comfortable while yeah. also solid enough to not like fall over on you yeah it's gonna be a journey we're working on it so we'll see how it goes but thank you everybody for, for attending the, but I, I'm, I'm definitely curious the canva thing just just for the canva thing also just so you ladies know if you have the pro version you can hook up your domain name to your website directly on canva And so if you're paying for the pro, you don't really technically need hosting. You can almost do everything that you need from creating a splash page, creating a flyer. I've hooked them up for the ladies that I helped out and they're just attached to my pro account because they don't have hosting. And so you can literally just hook it right up. So you could have as many domains as you wanted hooked up for a flyer or for anything you can think of. It's, and then their AI tools seem to be getting better all the time, which is really great. They they need to get a little bit better with their tools. Their magic magic create need, is exciting, but needs a little bit of work. Needs a little bit of work. But yeah. I, I like well, definitely, everything else so, it does. So there's a link there if anyone wants to say hi. I just made the group, um, and I'll make you an admin on it so you can if you want to add anybody or take over oh, the cool. group, you're welcome to. Oh, that's um, awesome, Megan. Just whenever I've never like, actually just heard click of that on it. Tool. Oh, that, no, that's just Telegram. So see on the right where it says you can click on this link. If you click on that in the app, there's a group. There's a lot you can do with Telegram if you don't. I never heard. Already. Yeah, I've never heard of Telegram. Okay, there you go. Welcome to Amazing. In the I love crypto new world. It's very popular. <laughs> but um, I love that. So if you go ahead and click on that and then um, you can say hi and I'll and we can chat about the Murphy bed once it's uh, a little further along. But I'm going to make a prototype probably in the next couple of months. So. It's Very exciting. cool. Well, I would, I may be a customer because my husband and I are talking about getting a Murphy bed for our house for guests. Yeah. Since I don't well, like... great. So then you can give me feedback on what you would also want, or I wanted to make it modular, like how you add things for alpha mm-hmm. so you can add things to it if you want to. Um, it just doesn't, it feels very limiting what the options are. So it's, but it's, it's definitely been a process. Um, and arguably who knows that may end up being my main business is the Murphy bed thing later. So Uh, it sounds like you've got a few paths. It's exciting. Yeah. All right. Cool. It was nice to meet you, Nicole. Thank you You so much for hosting. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you for attending. Thank you, Teresa. This was wonderful. So much like happy, wonderful, appreciative feedback in the chat. I know some folks, we lost some folks, but um, this was so helpful and so chock full of amazing information. So thank you. Thank you for your I really, I really want to, I'd really be curious because I spend like 
I always feel like with these sessions and, I, and I'm free to happy to share this. I'm, I'm all vulnerable transparency as a human um, that like, I really want to make sure that I'm, I'm providing new value, things that people don't know. So I really need to know if it's like, oh, wow, I could, I already knew all this stuff or no, some of this was new. And I feel like for me, it's the people that I work with are like on like a huge roller coaster of like, as I said, like haven't touched it, have really gotten into it, haven't like have used it, but I'm, we're not getting the most out of it. So any like feedback, I love the anonymous feedback. Hopefully people will share stuff there and then maybe you'll share that with me um, because I really want to make I sure think that Teresa, these sessions are helpful. There's some really cool um, AI course creation tools. I haven't I haven't played with them yet, but it might be neat to make a little mini course of like, I'm here, mm. I'm here, I'm here. And then you could drop that as like a free thing for them to go through and maybe give them a list so that they already have a starting point of kind of playing around and then scheduling a follow-up to talk to them after they've played around a little bit might be. Oh, that's a cool idea. Cool. Yeah. I love that. I'm trying to add like little things to my website too. So Right now it's just, I'm just like at the front end getting feedback on copywriting and stuff like that. But I, I appreciate that. I love that. Awesome. Well, we will, we will definitely share with you. Um, Caitlin's going to follow up with you tomorrow and, um, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. It was wonderful. Yes. 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 Appreciate yes. We'll you. see you again at dreamers and doers. Yes. Bye everyone. Bye.